Man, I, I mean, people strap them onto their lawnmowers, and uh, I mean, I've seen the most creative, like, you know, a dude tried to put one on a wave runner. Uh, it, most of it has been like, like just wild application. Um, but then there's also been other applications where I was like, you know, I, I actually thought about that, but I didn't think it would like catch as much, you know, and like, um, like golfing, like, man, people put these in the back of their golf cart like crazy. That was Jonathan McKenzie with some insight into the minds of select turtle box owners. An amazing founders episode today on the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show. Welcome to the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show, where you discover tips, tricks, and tools from the leading names in fly fishing today. Hey, how's it going today? Thanks for stopping by the Fly Fishing Show. If you want to support our local fly shop, please head over to wetflyswing.com slash fly shop. Anything you purchase at that link will support our local fly shop and support this podcast in one easy shot. I want to thank you in advance if you had a chance to uh, make a purchase there. Jonathan McKenzie is one of the co-owners of TurtleBox Audio, a bomber-proof Bluetooth speaker you got to check out. We hear the story and perspective that uh, was really cool today. We had a really good chat here, so I know you're going to love this one. Uh, we even get a little nerdy and techy talking about some of the, uh, the comparison with some of the Apple products. And uh, we actually finished up talking about a little tequila. Uh, we're going to take you on a ride in this one. So without further ado, here's Jonathan McKenzie from TurtleBoxAudio.com. How's it going, Jonathan? Man, Dave, going good. Going good. Thanks for having us on. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for thanks for coming on and making some time here. This is, uh, this is going to be fun. I've been thinking about this one for a while because obviously I've got a turtle box uh, in, in my uh, – <laughs> I've got it in my truck right now. It's in the back, in the back of the pickup. And uh, and you're a sponsor for this show. So just right up front for anybody that doesn't know, I think probably most people already know that. But um, So I'm excited to dig into the turtle box and kind of everything you have going there. But before we get there, just talk about how you first got into – maybe you're not the greatest fisher but it sounds like you do some fishing so how, how'd you get into it <laughs> yeah man um uh we started turtle box uh four co-founders uh we all used to live together in a bachelor pad here in houston we lived on our local body of water called buffalo bayou it is not a great fishery but it is uh, a body of water that runs through <laughs> runs through houston and um uh eventually dumps into galveston bay where there's a lot of good fishing and um Man, we were just adventurers and always on the bayou, kayaking and canoeing. And then uh, the four of us owned a sailboat together on, and we kept it at, 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 in uh, Galveston Bay. And there was just no, this was like eight years ago. Uh, there were, there were no portable speakers um, eight years ago that could really keep up with that lifestyle. And there was a couple of things, you know, technically that were supposed to be geared toward the outdoors, but man, we had bought and broken everything that was out there. And all we really wanted was just some music as we were doing these things, as we were on the water outside, having fun, adventuring with our friends. And so eventually one of my partners, Will Bradley, he gets fed up. This dude just, he is like, gotta have music with him everywhere. It's just like in his blood. Um, I love music too, but I also love being silent and, um, he's got to have music everywhere. And so he, he dreams this thing up. He tells me about it. He's like, John, man, I got this idea, dude, we're going to, we're going to build this portable speaker. It's going to change our lives. We're going to take it everywhere. And I'm like, okay, you know? <laughs> um, and, uh, he was telling me, cause I'm, I'm kind of handy. I'm pretty good at making things. Um, he was like, so I, I think I'm going to need your help to put this thing together. I said, cool. So I come home from work one day and, um, he is hollering at me like, Hey John, man, come on up here. Got a bunch of stuff to show you. So I walk into his room and he's got like, you know, like 20 boxes laid out all across his room. Uh, like a bunch of stuff just got delivered. And I'm like, Will, what is all this stuff? He's like, man, I, this is, we're going to build that speaker I was telling you about. And I was like, Oh, okay, cool. And so the four of us roommates, um, interestingly enough, none of us are engineers. We were all, you know, professional businessmen. Two mm -hmm. of us have been in real estate our whole lives. The other two have been in energy. We are now all turtle boxers. Hmm. Um, and we're not engineers, but we all know how to tinker. And so the four of us collectively, we like to joke, make kind of one engineer. Uh, when all <laughs> four of us put our minds together, we can kind of figure out how to, how to get something done. And so we build this speaker. Uh, we have it in our office. It's, it's, I call it the million dollar turtle box. It's for sale. If you want to pay a yeah. million dollars for it. Um, <laughs> 
and uh, we show it to everybody who walks in. It's fun to see kind of like that's the beginning. Can can we take a, is there a photo? Can we get a picture of that to put in the show notes? Absolutely. That'd yeah, be no, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll shoot a picture of it here when we're done and email it to you. It's, um, it's probably, there's probably a picture of it somewhere on our website, but yeah. no, I'd love to, I'd love to give you a picture. It's, it's, cool. uh, it's cool. See our roots. And so we build this thing. It works. It kicks ass. We take it everywhere. Um, you know, all up and down Buffalo Bayou, all over Galveston Bay. And for about a year, we, we take this thing kind of everywhere with us. And there was no intention to start a business. It was very much just, hey, we want music with us when we're outside doing stuff. <laughs> um, and after about a year of toting this thing around, we'd had enough people ask, you know, hey, what is that thing and where do I get one? And I'm kind of the serial entrepreneur of the group. And, and I, I said, guys, let's start a business, you know, like this, this thing might have some legs to it. And, you know, honestly, it's, you know, it's kind of four buddies in the backyard drinking beer one night and, and we're like, Hey, let's start a business, you know? And everybody's like, no, that sounds fun. It's like, cheers, you know? And, and, uh, you know, okay, well, what are we going to call it? You know? And, and Reagan, one of our other partners, I mean, you know, there was no whiteboard session. There was no brainstorming. There was no nothing. He goes, let's call it turtle box. Huh? I'm not kidding. And we all look at each other and we're like, perfect. That's freaking brilliant. Let's call it turtle box. Cheers. And that was, that was eight years ago. Wow. Um, and, uh, we had no idea what we were getting into when we, when we, you know, toasted those beers that night. Um, and that kicked off about five years of product and development and R and R and D and yeah. fundraising. And, and, um, it, it just, every step just kept getting, like, we just kept knocking down walls and, and, and we're, it was going places that we were like, wow, we, we didn't, I think we all like hoped it would end up where it is today. But yeah. it, it, again, it was, it was really just four buddies kind of just wanting to do something fun together. It that's wasn't right. like, and so that's how it happened. And, huh. um, ultimately, uh, you know, we've, we've left our corporate lives and now we sell speakers. <laughs> that's that amazing. Uh, that's amazing. Uh, and it's a lot of fun. So, yeah. So when you started it back, um, you know, when you got, well, when the idea first was there, you weren't thinking you guys were going to be going all in necessarily on this thing or, or did you, you know, I, I probably did personally. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm the, I'm kind of the, the wild gunslinger of the group. And, um, I actually, you know, I actually studied, um, entrepreneurship. So oh, I'm, wow. I'm, uh, I'm a finance and entrepreneurship. That's cool. Major. Um, and, um, and so it, it has always been my lifelong dream to, you know, start a business. And so I think in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, wow, this would be really cool if this takes off and becomes our full time gig. Um, but uh, it was so far, you know, where we were when we first started building yeah. these things in our garage, you know, and we ended up building like 50 of them in our garage, sold them to friends and family. And, out of that, we, we found some of our first investors and, huh. but, but no, it, it was not part of the vision. I don't, yeah. I don't think it That's was right. just, Hey, let's have fun. Listen um, to some music. You know, and, and we just, as a group, the four of us, you know, had this bachelor pad, you know, really always sought to do life a little bit different. You know, we were like, man, there's a bunch of zombies out there just walking dead through life. And yeah man, we don't want that to be us, you know? And, and so we, we just turned our home and our entire lifestyle into this, like, look, man, we just want to help other people do life well. And we, we kind of, we just like coined it as like living free. Like it was just live free. Like, yeah. and everything we were going to do, we're going to live free. And, um, if we're making a speaker, we're going to live free. If we're going sailing, we're going to live free. If we're going fishing or hunting or whatever it is. And, and man, just people started like really kind of gravitating toward that. And so there's been a lot of people following this, you know, turtle box story that started with just four friends doing life together and trying to do it well. And, um, you know, out of that, you know, all four of us, um, it's kind of been a weird deal, but you know, we all got married, um, like all four of us bachelors, we all got married in the same calendar year. Um, you know, all had our first children in the same calendar year 
all had our second children in the same calendar huh. year. Like just our lives have gotten wow. so intermingled. And so the, you know, we call it the turtle box family, you know, was four dudes just like, you know, kind of bumbling through life eight years ago, um, is now, you know, there's like, you know, yeah, the focus. there's like, there's like 25 people in the turtle box family now. Cause we've got wives and kids and all of our wives are, you know, great friends and all of our kids play together. And it's just this, it's been That's this really, really cool. cool thing to watch grow around a product and a business that, um, you know, we, we like, we like to say turtle box, you know, um, we believe that turtle box brings together two things that all people universally enjoy being outside and listening to music. Yeah. And, and when you're doing those two things, nine times out of 10, you're doing them with other people. And so there's this being outside, listening to great music with other people, this communal aspect this, you know, what we call kind of the human element of turtle box is like, man, sitting in your backyard, listening to music by yourself is fine, but doing it with a buddy or a friend or a spouse or your kids, man, that's just enjoying things with other people is really what we're about as a company. And, um, that's, uh, been lived out in, in our lives. So that's, it's kind of a cool thing to see that yeah. all happen. That's amazing. I think, and that's the thing that I really love. I find this, you know, we focus a lot on fly fishing, but you know, we got listeners that, you know, hunt and do all sorts of things, but I really, I'm getting these product, you know, some of these, these podcasts I've been doing, I really love because I'm getting to interview people like yourself and hear about these stories of, you know, smaller companies and the families. And I mean, that's who we all want to support, right? I mean, I want to support a company like you guys. I don't want to go buy a, a speaker from fricking Wal mm -hmm. Walmart, right? And, and whoever, and I don't know the, you know what I mean? But I know who <laughs> yeah, it is. Right. I, I know you guys, I know the story. I mean, that's the power I think of, of what we have yeah. going here. So, uh, and it's a cool story. Um, I want to go back Absolutely. that thing you, know, you mentioned because, you know, when I think of getting a bunch of speaker parts and coming to my house and I'm putting it together, I mean, that speaker would not sound good. I mean, how, how does Will, <laughs> how do you, like, take us back there a little bit. I mean, how do you create even something that works? Did you have, like, a, a, a plan you were following or how do you know how to even build a speaker? Yeah, well, you know, like I said, all, all four of us have some little bit of tinker in us and um, none of us are engineers, but we've got enough tinker to kind of like just figure things out. And, you know, unbeknownst to us, Will had been dreaming about this for a while and he had been just, I think just, you know, ravaging the internet and how can I take a, you know, his vision was I'm going to take a, a, a Marine grade six by nine, a boat speaker that I would put in a boat. And I'm going to buy the smallest, most powerful car amplifier. <laughs> so he just started like thinking through like, okay, gotcha. I'm going to build a speaker. What's, what's the components of a speaker? I need a, I need a, I need a speaker. I need <laughs> an amplifier. I need a battery and I need some way to control this thing. And then I need an enclosure to put it all in. Right. And so he said, all right, well, I want it to be waterproof or I want to take it on our boat and the canoe. So let's start with a Marine grade six by nine, which is still the the heart and soul of mm. Turtle Box. You know, our product is the only product on the market with a big, beautiful six by nine in the front of it. Um, we like the joke. We don't know why, and we're thankful. But you know, everybody hides their speakers. Yeah, like all these portable speakers, like T they're hidden. They're tiny. Yeah. Uh, oh, right, they're hidden. Yeah, they're just kind of hidden. You're like, what is in this thing? You know, like where's this? Where where's the sound even coming from? You're kind of looking at a product, right? You don't yeah. even know where the speakers are. Turtle box is like, dude, our speaker is right there. <laughs> you know? uh, uh, and so it just communicates this big sound. So, so Marine grade six by nine. And then he went and found this, this uh, pretty powerful little car amp. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, car amplifiers run on 12 volts. And so, um, we hooked it up to a pair of, um, uh, uh motorcycle batteries. Mm. Um, so, um, uh, it's like a brick, it's a sealed lead acid, 12 volt battery. Um, and, um, and then uh, put it all inside of an off-branded Pelican case. Um, oh, wow. Uh, we were poor, and so we were like, man, we ain't paying 100 bucks for Pelican case. <laughs> we, uh, we found these off-branded cases and, and um, you know, cut a bunch of holes in this thing, mounted the speaker. So we, we just liquid-nailed everything into place. And then um, I think it had one – it had two – 
ports. Like we had a, we had like bought, we, we, everything we bought was Marine grade. We went to like West Marine. I don't know if y'all have West Marine up there. Um, uh, yeah. West, West Marine's a big, um, they're just a boat, you know, all things boating and. Oh, gotcha. So you can go there and like buy switches for your boat and control panels for your uh, boat yeah. and stuff. And, um, and so we went there, bought all of this stuff like auxiliary inputs and switches and controllers and everything was marine grade. Everything was silicone hmm. sealed. So we had, we'd got all this, you know, clear silicone and gooped this thing up and, and then fired it up, dude. And it worked. It did. And, um, it worked pretty well. Um, and, uh, that's, yeah, that's kind of the simple, simple engineering that's uh, it. behind it. That's awesome. And, and the battery See, I'm sure you've kind of had a lot of uh, changes over time. I mean, the battery is one thing that I, I love about it. It seems like, I mean, once you charge that thing, I mean, I, I don't even, I forget about it. It just seems like it just keeps going. What, what do you guys got in there for a battery and how does that compare to, to uh, like, I guess compared to maybe you're, you're talking on Apple AirPods, you know, the tech there. I mean, is there any similarities in what you guys have going? Yeah. Yeah. So it's interesting. So I'll, I'll get back to the Apple AirPods tech because yeah. there is similarities there, but not, not in the battery space. Um, so our batteries actually are, uh, more Tesla oriented. And so, um, the exact same batteries that are in a Tesla are in a turtle box. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. So there is a, a very popular, uh, lithium ion cell called an 18650. It kind of looks like a D cell battery. Okay. Um, but it's a lithium ion. And so a, a Tesla, you know, uh, their battery pack is, you know, hundreds of these 18650s. Gotcha. Um, those same cells are in a turtle box and hmm. you know, I appreciate you mentioning the battery life. Um, that has been something that has, has also blown us away when, when we were, when we went from what we made in our garage, this is going to get a little more nerdy. Yeah. But go for it. When we went from what we made in our garage to what we actually started producing and selling to the public. Um, the hardest thing that we solved when it came to like mass manufacturing and engineering, was the battery and the management and the power management system and this in simple terms um you, you we say it takes power to make power and what we were trying to do was create the loudest portable speaker out there and so volume power hmm. decibels was what we were after because we felt like everything out there was one not that rugged and two not that loud yeah. like uh, if I'm going to be out at the beach and the wind and the right. waves are crashing and I'm I, like, I want to hear my music, you know, and there, you had to be right next to your speaker. It wasn't much louder than your you know, cell phone. And so, man, we were like, dude, if we're not loud, we're nothing. So <laughs> we got to really engineer this thing to be loud. And eight years ago, like battery technology has come like just volumes over the last eight years oh, wow. with, yep. um, with electric vehicle technology, um, just battery development, battery technology, new chemistry and stuff is really uh, doing some neat things in the battery space, you know, higher energy density batteries, higher, you know, amperage and stuff like that. And so what you what, what you had is, is, you know, turtle box number one was built with sealed lead acid batteries. SLA batteries are what your car runs on, like okay. a, a regular car. Your, your big old car battery is a, is a sealed lead acid battery. The, the, the really cool thing about an SLA battery is it has what's called a super high amp draw. And so that's how it starts your car mm. is you, you crank your car and your battery sends it like just to think about like a lightning bolt. Like it just goes and it sends out a lot of energy really, really fast to start your engine. Um, that's called a high amp draw. Alternatively, like your cell phone and your laptop have very, very low amp draw. Like at no point in the usage of your cell phone or your laptop, do you need like a ton of power? You just need a lot of power, a little bit of power over a long period of time. Mm -hmm. Well, music is very different. Uh, music has, you know, is, is a, it's not a static consumption of power. Like when you listen to like heavy bass music and the drum is kicking or the bass line is kicking, like every time that that drum goes, boom, 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 yeah. you're drawing more power when that's happening. Oh, wow. Um, and so, so when I say it takes power to make power, you know, you go into your house and you turn on your home stereo system. Um, you've got basically an infinite amount of power. You've got 120 volts and, you know, 20 amps through that circuit. And you can just, your home stereo can get really, really loud. Um, 
battery technology obviously limits that. And so um, sealed lead acid batteries were cool in the original turtle boxes because they had high amp draw. Mm -hmm. And so we could, we could turn up a car stereo amplifier attached to these things very, very loud. The problem was is that the batteries didn't last very long. Uh, SLA battery technology is just a, it's a very old technology. It's not a very energy efficient. It's not very yeah. energy dense. Um, the shelf life on them is very poor. And so, uh, at the time, um, lithium ion was really only being, cre- you know, produced commercially in very, very low amp draw type of battery situations for laptops and cell phones. So we really struggled to produce this battery management, power management equation to produce the volume that we needed in the turtle box. And eventually the 18650 cells were produced and, and we implemented those in our product and now have you know, a, a battery management system that allows super high amp draw and a great battery longevity, great shelf life. And to your point, um, I mean, we were just trying to make the best thing we could. And when the first batch of turtle boxes, you know, commercially went out in July of 2018, that's when we launched the okay. company was in July of 2018. When the first batch went out, about six months later, we started getting all of these emails and phone calls from customers like, um, had a turtle box for six months and, um, Battery's you know, dead now. Uh, battery's dead and I have no idea where my charger is. Oh, and man. Like people, people had like never used their chargers oh my and, gosh. and didn't know where they were. And and so like, <laughs> we were like, Oh, well, okay. Uh, yeah, man, send us your address. We'll send you a new charger. And like the first time it happened, we were kind of like, that guy's, an, that yep. guy's an idiot. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. like, uh, and then it like kept happening and we were like, wow, this is kind of a theme. Yeah. Um, people don't charge this thing enough to like put their charger in a location that they remember where it is. They no. And so, um, and so we started selling chargers on the website and now we've got people that buy turtle boxes and they'll just, they'll buy like four chargers and like put one at their lake house and one at their ranch, right. one at their office or whatever. Yeah. Um, and, um, that's been a really cool thing to watch happen is see people use turtle boxes and realize, wow, man, one of the greatest things about this is, I just don't have to charge it that often. And it's just one less thing I got to worry about when I'm out on my boat all day. Um, you know, so that's been cool. And it's not that they, they do die, you know, um, you know, max at max volume, you know, if you turn that thing up and just blow it out all day long, you're going to get, you know, for your listeners that you're going to get six to seven hours out of a max, a max, like if you just blow it out, you never turn it down. You can get six, to seven hours. Um, if you're just like, Low. chilling, easy yep. listening in your backyard, on your boat or whatever. I mean, you're going to get 20 plus hours. Gotcha. Um, so and, easily, um, easily so, for a trip, you can take that out. Don't worry. You don't even have to bring the yeah, charger probably. Yeah. Yeah. So that's been a neat, a neat thing. Yeah. Um, cool. As far yeah. as that technology. That's awesome. yeah. Well, and it sounds like, I mean, obviously you guys, it feels like you guys have nailed the tech, which is amazing. Um, and then the other, the other piece is the, well, obviously the Bluetooth, right? I mean, was that yeah. initially, yeah. did you guys have the Bluetooth feature when you started too? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, tur- turtle box number one, no Bluetooth. Uh, yeah. Turtle box number one, you know, the one that we made in our garage, the very first was, um, it just had an auxiliary input. So yeah. again, we went and bought this marine grade aux input. And yeah. Eventually we were like, man, this sucks. Like we got to put a Bluetooth module inside this thing. So we ended up, we did eventually open that one back up, put a Bluetooth module in, um, and so when we went, when we went to, you know, product design for, you know, commercial application, we said, oh yeah, no, you know, no brainer. This thing's gotta be Bluetooth, Bluetooth matters. And, um, so Bluetooth has been another really, really, really great part of our product. We feel like our Bluetooth modules and chips are very strong. Their range is very, very good. Um, and, um, connectivity is good. And then, you know, you mentioned earlier, Hey, do you have any similarities to AirPods? Yeah. And, uh, we do. And so, um, I don't know if you know this, like, do, do you, have, you just have one turtle box, right? Yeah. Yeah. I have the, yep. Just the green okay. one. So if you have two, um, you can pair two turtle boxes in true wireless stereo. It's called TWS. Mm-hmm. Um, and, where you actually will have a left channel and a right channel. And if you're listening to some great, great classic rock or something, you're going to hear 
like the, okay there's drums Left over and here right. and there's guitar over here so it's stereo right. and it is, versus mo- it is mono super yeah. cool yep so a single turtle box is a mono signal um two turtle boxes paired with tws is a stereo uh signal and so um same technology as in airpods you pull your airpods out you put them in your ear and they instantly you don't realize this because it's just how apple made the product is your left pod and your right pod they talk to each other you know and um those are using a technology called tws true wireless stereo Hmm. and uh turtle boxes use the exact same technology um ours you got to push a button to engage it because you know unlike airpods everybody has two airpods they sell them in a left and right you know yeah not everybody owns two turtle boxes so no um we didn't make them um, immediately pair with each other when you turn them on but um, you know, two turtle boxes is, it's like mind blowing. No kidding. It's, one turtle box is cool. Like I tell people this all the time. I'm like, dude, I realize that I own this company and <laughs> so I'm a little bit biased, but trust me, like one turtle box is cool. Two turtle boxes is not twice as good. It's like eight times as good. It's like the weirdest thing when you fire two of them up and you turn it up. And it particularly like, we like to tell people like, you know, get outside, uh, get in a, get in a, you know, if you got a bigger backyard or whatever, like you spread those boxes out. We, we like to call it, you know, creating like a 20 foot triangle or a 30 foot triangle. Um, you spread the turtle boxes out about 30 feet apart. You get about 30 feet away from them. Um, and you crank it up all the way, Yeah, man, it, it fills your backyard like an outdoor concert. No kidding. It is the, it is the coolest thing. Um, oh, that's awesome. and so we do this all the time. Like we'll go on, you know, family, you know, like all the turtle box people, we'll all go on a family camping trip or go to a buddy's ranch or whatever. And dude, we put two turtle boxes out and sometimes if you've got nothing in the way, um, <laughs> that's amazing. You, you can get them like you, you can get them like 80 feet apart wow. um, without losing Bluetooth tech. Now, if you get some stuff in between those, you can lose signal, yeah. but on a big open ranch, we'll get them like 80 feet apart, turn them all the way up and just have like a huge field party with all of our kids. <laughs> it's, 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 That's so it's cool. Awesome, yeah, I, yeah. I've yeah. got a little quick story. This is funny because this reminded me of one back, I think it was like high school days, but we used to have the spot where we'd go down to the river. We had this spot. It was an amazing beach, but you had to hike. It was about, I, I, I want to say maybe a quarter, maybe a half a mile. And, and, it, and we had a lot of stuff and we had this one guy. I mean, I'm not, I'm not shitting you. This guy, literally brought these like four foot high home speakers, like big, uh, and a, his whole oh, thing. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So we, yeah. we had guys with wheel, wheelbarrows carrying each speaker. He had his whole amp system. We had like <laughs> a couple kegs. I mean, we, it was like the real deal. We, it spent, you know, it took us yeah. like an hour or two to get it. So like, think of that versus what you guys have. Essentially today you could get two turtle boxes <laughs> that have the same thing, right? That's exactly right. You really could. God, yeah. That's so um, cool. I didn't game, realize that. It's a game changer, man. We, uh, it's so fun for us because we, you know, our our office here is not really a retail store, but we have a bunch of people just stop by and hey, I saw you guys were around. And oh, cool! They walk they walk in to buy one turtle box and they leave with two. Yeah, and because um, we just we don't let somebody come in here without hearing two of them. We'll be like, hey, have you ever heard you ever heard two of them paired up? And they're like, no, I didn't even know they could pair. You know, and we're like, all right, here let's fire up two of them for you. And we fire up two and their jaw drops and they're like, yeah, I was going to buy one, but yeah, give me two, you know? And so it's, it's been, it's, yeah. th- that's always really fun because we really feel like I, we're not really like salesy. We're just trying to like, you know, make people's lives better. And, um, a lot of people will see those two paired up and they're like, dude, actually that's exactly what I needed. Like, you know, I was going to put a, you know, cause some of these guys are coming in here and they're like, yeah, I just bought this new boat. And I was yeah. thinking about putting a $5,000 sound system in my right. boat. Yeah. Uh, give me two turtle boxes. No kidding. You know? like, way better deal. Yeah. Um, you know, or dudes who, you know, this is a little different in y'all's world, but like mm-hmm. down here, like, you know, the, the skiff market is huge. Yeah. Um, and you know, uh, these little polling skiffs and, and these badass boats that people spend, you know, upwards of 30 grand on. And they're just super stripped down, you know, and, um, Mm -hmm. you know, turtle box is becoming kind of the go-to, uh, you know, audio element of these skiffs, you know? So, 
Um, we're loving that because the cool thing too, is it's not like you're going to sink a bunch of money into your boat system. It, it's like, no man, turtle box goes with you, you know? Yeah. So when you're leaving your boat, you take your speaker with you. It's, it's awesome. Exactly. And yeah, that's what I found. I mean, I, I definitely, I mean, I've used it, I mean, probably, probably more at home just because I mean, we're obviously at home. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, we're, we've got it mm-hmm. always going, you know, it's just sitting there and we don't, I mean, I guess we didn't have a real badass home st- uh, stereo system before, but I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, it's just great to have. It's like super easy. You can grab it. Like I said, I just grabbed it through the back of the pickup. So now, because we're going out on a mm-hmm. trip. And so, yeah, no, man, I think you guys have a, a cool thing going. Um, I would like to dig just a little more into, um, you know, the other guys. You mentioned Will, but I just want to touch on it because it's interesting, right? You all brought four, brought this thing together. So talk about the other guys. Who are we missing here and what do those guys kind of, what's their what's their uh, specific uh, <laughs> superpower? <laughs> yeah, man. Um, yeah, so Will Bradley, already talked about him, and, and we give him credit for really, uh, you know, thinking this thing up and, uh, he's, he's kind and he gives us credit for helping him bring it to life. Um, Will is, um, I think Will's superpower is, man, he knows how to rally people. Like you just, you hang out with Will and it's like, whatever Will's doing, that's what you want to go do. <laughs> and so if Will's like, Hey man, y'all want to go to the beach this weekend? You're like, yeah, let's go. You know, if, yeah. if I say, Hey, let's go to the beach, you'll be like, yeah, I don't know, man. I, I kind of had some play, you know. Right. Like, it's just Will. Will has this gift of rallying people and bringing people together, and and uh, he's a great leader and um, uh, a good visionary. Yeah. Um. So that's that's Will. Um. And then um, you've got Reagan, who I've also mentioned. Um. Reagan is our our CFO figure here. Um. Great with numbers. Um, understands banking and lending and stuff. And yeah. so that's probably one of his highest contributions to the group is he makes sure that we don't, um, yep. you know, like buy a helicopter <laughs> accidentally or something. Um, uh, and um, he's also super, super, um, he's real uh, particular. Like I, I give Reagan a lot of credit for his particularness when it comes to certain qualities of the turtle box. Um, mm-hmm. This is actually where we all contribute. Like, um, there's so many elements that make this product what it is for us. Um, and this, this culmination of things that we care about that make it valuable to the customer. And so that could be every, everything from like the specific shade of the color mm-hmm. that somebody cares about to the specific sound curve to the specific, you know, quality of the resin and how, you know, structurally sound it is, blah, blah, blah. Hmm. Reagan has some things that he is just uber particular on that I think if he were not particular on, the turtle box would not be as good as it is. Um, yeah. You know, and then there's Jeff, uh, Jeff Besner. Um, Jeff brings, you know, he has out of the four of us definitely more like big company corporate right. exposure than any of us. Uh, yeah. the, the other three of us, we've all worked either for ourselves or in more boutique um, yeah. environments, uh, in real estate and energy, Jeff has big business experience and, um, is like a really, really skilled operational guy. Mm-hmm. Um, and so from the nuts and bolts of just running this business, Jeff brings in a lot of, uh, systems and protocol and Hey guys, let's do it this way instead of this way. And we're like, Oh yeah, that's, that's, that's cool. pretty brilliant actually. Um, you know, um, he, he applies a lot of direction to, what would otherwise be, you know, kind of just like throwing darts at a wall. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, also has a very, very keen ear, I think is one of Jeff's skills. Um, he's a, all of us are audiophiles to a certain degree. I think Jeff might take the cake, uh, in that regard. Like he just loves nerding out on some great home stereo mm-hmm. and, um, you know, so that's yeah. that's really one of his his big contributions as well. So that's that's the team, that's cool. and then there's me, and um, you know, heard enough about me yeah. probably. So yeah, yeah, no, it's awesome. Sounds like yeah, you guys basically you got the perfect match, four of you together. And I mean, what do you guys as you look into the future? I mean, obviously you're probably you know the visioning and all that stuff. I mean, how many people do you or do you guys think you should be adding or or should you add any i mean what, what's that look like i mean where are you taking this thing in the next five ten years yeah you mean like you mean like staff like staffing up yeah yeah i'm curious to hear because yeah, you hear you know, uh, yeah yeah we're we're actually kind of hiring right now uh um, oh nice uh 
we've uh, our team is growing so that's been really cool in fact i got a i have an interview this afternoon oh, so wow. um so yeah so we are growing we're seeing a need where it's like okay like the four founders our time is so maxed and we're we're starting to kind of break the system in ways you know where we're like okay uh, like, yeah you know, Too we don't, much. there's always this tension between like, you know, like wanting to hire people and not wanting to oh. hire people and, you know, wanting, wanting to do it ourselves. Cause that's just our, that's just our nature. Like we're just, you know, yeah. we're just hustlers. All four of us are man. And it's yeah. like, you know, we've been at this for so long and, and, you know, our wives have seen us like, you know, it's working to the wee hours of the night when we had two jobs, you know, and it's like, so our nature yeah. is to just be like, no, we'll get it done. We'll, we'll figure it out. And we're starting to realize like that doesn't, that doesn't work. Um, no. and so we are, we are growing, uh, looking to hire some people, um, and, uh, you know, really starting to look into the future of, you know, how do we expand turtle box? Do we grow into other product categories? Do we make other speakers, bigger sizes, smaller sizes? Yeah. You know, we've learned so much about, the turtle box has opened our eyes to so many different, um, things, hmm. everything from the, uh, you know, like I just gave you yeah. a small dissertation on batteries. Like yeah. uh, we know a lot about battery technology. You know, what, what does that look like? Do we start building, you know, portable battery packs, you know, right. stuff like that. Um, you know, we know a lot about plastics and, um, cases like, do we build our own, you know, cases, you know, and so can turtle box become other products in addition to audio? We don't know, you know, right. Right. um, Right now, right now we're very, very focused on audio. Um, and, um, I'm, I probably am more of the product development guy. Um, so I always tell my partners like, look, dude, you know, put me in the future a little bit. Let me, let me dream yeah. into what our next things are. And so we've got a few things in the hopper that yeah. are cool. Um, you know, mostly speaker related. So, um, we'll see. Mostly speaker. What, what can you can you speak? Uh, maybe give us a little insight on some of that potentially without giving away too many secrets. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. <laughs> yeah, you can't. Yeah, I can't. Uh, all I can tell you is is there. You know, there will be some some more Turtle Box products on the horizon. Cool. And uh, cool. you know, our our goal is, and this this will get to a little bit of like you know why we work with you is you know our our goal is to build the Turtle Box brand. Um, in a way that, that, you know, people want to buy other things that we make, you know, like yeah. we, we love audio and, and we, we love, you know, growing in that space and want to become a, a genuine leader in that space. Um, and we've chosen to, to do that primarily on the backs of sportsmen, hunters and fishermen, um, our, our, our marketing and our, our, um, consumers are, are well beyond that space, but we just love that space. It's such a dedicated group of people. It's a dedicated group of gear hounds. Uh, a lot of people in that hunting and fishing and sportsman space, like they talk to each other, you know, just yeah. like you do on your podcast, like, Hey man, you know what, you know, what kind of lure are you using or what kind of yeah. reel are you using or what kind of rod? Like you share gear insight. What kind of boat are you using? What kind of shoes are you wearing? What yeah. kind of hat, you know, what kind of, like, it's like, people talk about gear in this space and that, that's mm -hmm. us too. It's not just like we pulled this space out of right. you know, nowhere. Like we all love to hunt and fish. We all love to be outside and adventure and hike and camp and ski and, you know, be on boats and ATVs. And that's just, that's just how we are. And so that's how we wanted to build our product. And what we found is, is that, you know, that community of people, once they became aware of turtle box kind of felt like, we did something for them like, Oh wow, man. Like nobody, nobody made has ever made a portable speaker for me. Like, right. you know, all of these other portable speaker companies, they look super techie and yeah. you know, probably more like an Apple product than yep. like a Yeti product, you know? And so we were like, nah, man, like I don't want to build you an Apple looking product. I want to build you a Yeti looking product. Yeah. I want to build you something that speaks to who you are as a, as a, as a, as a sportsman. Um, and, and so our hope, probably the thing that we dial in on even more so than the, the quality of our product is the quality of our brand. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, if we cultivate the turtle box brand and the turtle box community, well, we see, you know, really, really, really great growth potential to, um, you know, take 
communities like yours and your podcast yeah. and, and go, Hey man, turtle box gets you. And so we, we are real keen on listening to people and we, man, we try and talk to everybody who wants to talk to us and, and, and learn from them and how they're using our product, how they think it can be better. And, you know, mm-hmm. we got some creative customers out there, man. I've seen turtle boxes used in ways I never dreamed turtle box should be used. <laughs> um, what, what, what would be that? What, what's one, one way that you, that you heard you're like, wow, I didn't think of that. Man. I, I mean, people strap them onto their lawnmowers. Oh my and, God. Uh, I mean, I've seen the most creative, like, you know, dude <laughs> tried to put one on a wave runner. Uh, oh my gosh. Right. It, most of it has been like, like just wild application, um, but then there's also been other applications where I was like, you know, I, I actually thought about that, but I didn't think it would like catch as much, you know, and like, um, like golfing, like, man, people put these in the back of their golf cart, like crazy. Um, yeah. and, um, like Reagan, one of my partners, he, he's like an unbelievable golfer. Um, and, uh, I just love seeing a turtle box in the golf space. You yeah. know, I think that's cool. Um, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'll just throw out some. You guys might be thinking about this. I, I always love thinking. I've I've had some products in the past too, and I know how how challenging it can be, right? Getting things right, and mm-hmm. when you have issues and things like that. But I mean, like we talked off air at the start. I mean, the Apple AirPods, man. I mean, one of the things mm-hmm. I use these things all the time. We both do. They're great. Um, but the only place I don't use them that much, or I'm a little skeptical, is uh, when I'm either around the water working out or if it's raining. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I'm a little worried, but yeah, mm-hmm. if you guys could come up with the, uh, the turtle box, uh, you know, I mean, earbuds or something that are totally yeah, waterproof, man. you know what I mean? Like think of that for that. Maybe that's down the line, but that would be amazing. Dude, we've, we've, we've talked about that yeah. actually. So, um, I appreciate that encouragement. Yeah. Um, cause yeah, that's, there's a long list of ideas, uh, in the hopper and I'll, I'll tell you that that's on the list of ideas. Cool. You know? So cool. That's good stuff. Um, yeah. Uh, you mentioned community members, listener. I mean, it's pretty amazing because I actually have another podcast that, that we, I do on the side. It's more focused on kind of online marketing and stuff. But um, we talked just recently, actually this week, we had this show on a community, building a community and stuff like that. And mm. in, our, in our community, I know exactly where listeners are coming, right, from all around the country and the world. Um, we've got hot spots, obviously, on the western part of the U.S. And Texas is actually a good hot spot for us. We have, you know, like up in the... Uh, New York, Pennsylvania. I mean, there's, we kind of know where they're at, but you know, I'm always thinking about the community. How do you guys, you know, what's your secret on building the community or what's your plan for the next few years on, you know, how do you engage that community? How do you build it? Yeah, man. I mean, I think that at the core, um, it's as simple as, um, you know, just being kind to people. Um, you know, we just, that's just kind of one of the mantras at turtle box is like, look, man, just kill everybody with kindness. You know, um, we, we joke, we, we, um, you know, we've just started hiring some people and, and so, um, you know, uh, we, we, we tell our, you know, if it's a new hire, we tell them, look, there is, uh, one way that you will get fired. Yeah. Like if you mouth off to a customer, I will fire you immediately. Yeah. Like, um, we have a z- like zero tolerance for mouthing off to a customer, even yeah. if that customer is being incredibly disrespectful. And we do a lot of customer service here, you know, right. where somebody's calling in, maybe their box isn't working the way it should to, or they've had a negative experience and we want to turn that negative into a positive. Right. Yeah. And so we are huge on customer service. And what we find is, is look, we're just a handful of dudes in, in Houston. Okay. We're not in all places. Like Jonathan McKenzie is physically in one place at one time. Um, but I am, you know, kind of connecting with so many people just by being, by, by cultivating a business that says we're going to be kind to people like, <clears throat> and so what we found is, is that man, we're going to strive to build the best product that we can, but I'm going to tell you right now, our product will fail. Like yeah. it, and it does, yeah. you know, like it, 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 it is not a hundred percent perfect. No. Um, our customer service can be <laughs> like, we really believe that there's no reason that we should ever fail at customer service. And 
that we can't solve somebody's problem and make a negative into a positive. Even if at the end of the day, that means just giving them their money back. Um, you know, uh, and so we, we say this, like, look, we can fail at building a perfect turtle box as, as, as weird as that sounds, but we cannot fail at customer service. Um, and what we found is, is that in being striving to be amazing at customer service, that has cultivated its own community because people talk about good customer service. Like good customer service is so rare these days. You know, you go into a sandwich shop and the dude yeah. making your sandwich just kind of throws it all over the place. And yeah. you're like, why, why am I even paying you to make this? You know? And then, and then you go to a different sandwich shop and the dude just, you can just tell he's like, man, Love this it. guy is making this sandwich. And you're like, dude, this is amazing. Yeah. Well, what do you do? You leave and you go tell your buddy, you're like, dude, I just went to Dave's sandwich shop yep. and like, you got to go watch this dude make a sandwich. <laughs> well, that's what people are doing when they experience good, good customer service. Cause it's so out of the ordinary in today's world to be treated with a lot of respect and a lot of kindness, even when you're pretty upset, you know, um, yeah. people talk about that. And so we've seen our community grow just from, fielding negative experiences and turning them into positives. Um, that's just one simple, simple way. Yeah. Um, and, 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 you know, there's a lot of other things that we do, but I'd say that's probably one of the most powerful is just because people, people love being respected, man. And that's just, we just want to make people feel, feel respected. So where would be a place, you know, where people can find me, obviously you guys are on Instagram and stuff like that. Do you have a place where your mm-hmm. community comes together and connects or can, can talk or anything like that? Or do you have plans to, to dig into that? I mean, that's a good question. We don't like, we've kicked around having, you know, starting our own podcast. Um, oh, cool. we, we've definitely kicked that so around. I think, I think maybe that'd be something we'd like to do and just start to, you know, tell, tell other people's stories like you do. And yep. we just love that. Um, so we've definitely kicked that around because we've seen, I'll say this in a whole another community aspect, uh, at the brand level, uh, man, we've been fortunate enough to be in Texas at a really unique time where there's just some, some really awesome Texas brand growth. Oh yeah. Just some real cool boutique brands popping up. Like, uh, like the, who are, who are some of the big ones that everybody would know about? Yeah. So like, I'd say some of my favorites are, um, duck camp oh, yeah. is uh, a cam- camouflage company down here out of Austin. Oh, yeah. A lot of them are out of Austin. Uh, um, so you got duck camp. Um, you've got uh, Zilker belts, which is also in Austin. Really cool belt company, uh, makes these like Argentina looking belts. Hmm. Um, Chama, Chama chair. Uh, they're out of Dallas. Um, they make a really, really awesome hunting chair. Um, uh, Pack Mule is a cargo carrier, uh, makes the most badass cargo carrier put on the back of your truck. Oh, wow. Um, uh, Twisted X Brewery is a, is a you know, a beer company here, yep. but we're just really, really close with those guys. Um, I don't want to leave somebody out there listening. Yeah, like, yeah. John, you didn't mention us, man. Um, but <laughs> That's right. Anyways, there's, there's, a big, there's a big group of us, um, and there's there's actually like 10 brands in the group, but it's called the oh, Teos cool. Collaborative. What, 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 and, what's it called? Um, Tejas Collaborative. Te, Tejas, how do you and, spell that? Tejas. Oh, come on, man. You ain't from Texas. No, no I Tejas know. Tejas is Texas. Um, oh, te- oh really? Like, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we got a lot of lot of Latino influence down here. I mean, um, yeah, that's cool. And uh, we like our tacos and margaritas. Oh, right, right, right. Gotcha. gotcha. Um, you know, so so Tejas is, is T-E-J-A-S collaborative. And there's no official, like, you're not going to go find, like, a Tejas collaborative website. It's just a group of businesses that we just do a lot together down here. We go hunting together. Uh, we do a big dove hunt together every year. Uh-huh. Um, uh, and um, That's cool. There's just been, like, massive community growth just through that, where – yeah. like-minded brands are sharing secrets, you know, and going, Hey dude, like, yeah, I'm struggling with email marketing. Like what's working for you. And they're like, Oh dude, you got to try this out or this out, you know? And so it's a lot yeah. of just the sharing of ideas where instead of, you know, instead of, I think like historically, a lot of companies want to like, you know, kind of, keep all of their chips kind of right mm-hmm. here, like nestled up in their lap. And they're like, nah, man, you can't see what I'm yeah. doing over here. And, and, and there's been this, this like shift in the way that brands, uh, you know, collaborate with each other and go, Hey, you know, like if we actually like share some information, it might benefit both of us. Exactly. And we've seen such a massive, uh, 
you know, uh, change in, in a lot of businesses because of that. And that's been a real communal thing. And it's like, especially as founders, man, like, you know, um, founders are in a, a tough, tough space a lot of times because we're juggling so many things Mm -hmm. and it's not just like a CEO or anybody else. It's like, no man, you've got this baby. Like you like made this thing and it's like a child and you're trying to figure things out and there's just so many questions you have. And so when you've got these other brands with co-founders that you're now friends with and you get to go, it's like, it's like, you know, it's like therapy. It's That's like, huge. you know, going to, going to an AA meeting or something and be like, look guys, I drink too much, <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, can you help? You That's, know, um, that's, so That's cool. been a real cool communal growth. And then the same thing happens is, you know, people come into our shop and they see a pack mule hanging on our wall or they see a yeah. fire disc. That's another company, fire disc, really oh, cool group disc, yeah. that we work with here. Um, they see a fire disc in our shop or a pack mule on the wall or whatever, or some duck camp clothes. They're like, oh, dude, we love those guys, man. Yeah. We're like, oh, yeah, we're buddies with them. Hey, if you talk to James over there at duck camp, tell him we said what's up, you know? Yeah. And it's like the consumer starts to connect the dots and go, Oh, you guys know those guys and those guys and those guys. Oh yeah. I own all that stuff. Oh, I got to buy a turtle box, Exactly. you know? And like this whole communal thing just keeps kind of snowballing. It's, it's really, really cool. That is cool. Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, I guess I always call it's kind of a funny term, but a mastermind group, right? I mean, I've been in a number of, we call you know, mass. So you get like-minded people together and you meet on regular and, you know, a lot of times around business. And I mean, that's what you have there. You have this amazing group of, uh, you know, people that are, have a common goal, which is to create great products and services and stuff. And, um, so yeah, man, this is, this is cool to hear. I think you're, you're definitely preaching to the choir because on the podcasting, I mean, I actually kind of teach, help people get into podcasts. Mm-hmm. And I've always felt like with the fly fishing podcast, you know, I'm not worried about competition. I think the more we have the better, right? So I'm always trying to connect and I always find that the more I connect, That's right. with, you know what I mean? The more I connect with That's a right. new podcast, I, fa- I find that like a year later, two years later, you're like, Oh my God, that, that, that just paid me back. I didn't even ask for anything. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's like, that, I, I hear you. So, uh, cool, man. Well, I think, um, I mean, I think this story is amazing, right? I mean, I think it's even better than I was thinking as far as where you guys are going in the company. Um, anything else you want to throw out there? I know we didn't talk about all the little, yeah, you know what I mean, the benefits yeah. and features of your product. But before we no, start we to get out to, here, yeah. We don't need to talk about all the benefits and features. You know, I think one thing I did want to mention, and like you and I have talked about this in the past, I think this is particularly important for like your community of fly fishing is um, we have this. Um, this saying kind of behind the scenes and we're, we're eventually going to roll out an actual like marketing campaign around this, but it's, it's, we call it listen responsibly. And it's, it's a play on like, please drink responsibly, yeah. you know? Um, and so in the same way that like Budweiser who, you know, profits off of selling you beer yeah, is also telling you, Hey man, make sure you make sure you're responsible when, you know, when you're drinking, like, I know I'm selling you beer and I want you to enjoy my beer and I want you to think my beer is better than all the other beer. But Hey, by the way, just when you're doing it, just man, just be careful, like do the right thing. You yeah. know, um, that's, that's, we, we, we have that same feeling, uh, at the turtle box level in a lot of ways, um, where we say, listen responsibly, like, you know, look, we're all about having a good time and, um, you know, having fun and, goofing off Mm -hmm. and blowing, blowing music out, uh, uh, you know, at different places. Um, but man, just make sure you're doing it responsibly, you know, and, and we find that particularly true, uh, you know, on the river, you know, um, you know, in a drift boat, you know, or something just, you know, in some beautiful mountainous, like, man, just, you know what, that's actually a place you probably need to listen responsibly and just turn the tunes off listen to the sounds of nature, listen to the water run, listen to the birds chirp, you know, clear your head, you know? And so, as I said earlier, we, 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 we chose to build this company on the backs of sportsmen and some people might go, well, that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Cause I don't, I don't need a portable speaker when I'm in a deer blind, you know, like I'm supposed to be whisper quiet, you know? Right. Um, and we're like, no, 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 trust me. We get it, dude. Like, um, I am whisper quiet in my, in my tree stand when I'm sitting there with my bow. Um, but, um, 
we we still love it because what we say is man for the sportsman let the turtle box be your before and after yeah like it's it's look go and do your thing go and and conquer your river you know your field your deer stand whatever it is and then man when you're back at camp celebrating cleaning your game cleaning your fish cleaning your boat whatever you're doing telling stories around the campfire that's where turtle box fits in and that's what we call listening responsibly and it's not that there's not times when the turtle box is a ton of fun on the river trust me yep there's a there are times when you're like you know what right now i'm kicking my feet up i'm gonna drink a beer and i'm gonna just blast some tunes on this river yeah and grip it and rip it you know (laughs) um but but we do find that it's it's really important to us especially to the purists out there you know, the guys that are the leave no trace kind of guys, you know, we don't ever want turtle box to be perceived in this, like, you know, we're trying to like disrupt nature, you know, or anything like that. Um, and so that's yeah. a really, really important thing. That's a really important thing to me. Like I, I need my quiet space. Um, yeah. I just, I love, I live in this concrete jungle in Houston and yeah. there's just nothing better than when I can get out of town you know, to, to a ranch or get up to the mountains, you know, a couple times of the year. And dude, when I'm there, I'm pretty quiet, you know? (laughs) And, um, and I, and I still think that that's a good sales pitch for a speaker company, just like it's a good sales pitch for an alcohol company. I Um, love it. It's, it's kind of all things in moderation, you know? I love Um, it. I I love it. That's, that's pretty much what I live by. I think, I think it sounds amazing. Listen, responsibility, uh, responsible. I mean, sounds great. mm -hmm. I think that the idea makes total sense. And, uh, and moderation is like, I kind of try to live my life by that, even though I don't always do it. You know what I mean? But I know that, I know that if everything I do, I kind of think of it in moderation, I'll probably be better because it's like alcohol. If you don't, if you don't do alcohol in moderation, you're probably going to have to quit alcohol someday because. At right. some point, you're going to ruin it. Like, <laughs> you're going to ruin gonna it. Ruin that, yeah. Uh, and I, I'm with you. You know, yeah. it's like I I love I love me some tequila. Like, yeah, I, I can drink tequila, man. I, I uh, <laughs> if you had to buy what uh, if money isn't an option, or what do you what do you drink? Money's an option, man. I'm I'm probably a Claso Azul guy. So um, they're the Claso Azul Reposado is like just creme de la creme. The Don Julio 1942 is pretty amazing too. Okay, those are my two like go to. Those are yeah. Those are in the buck 20, buck 50 range. Okay. Um, well, what's a good, uh, what's a good cheap, it, what's a good cheap one or something that's good that doesn't man, cost a ton? Yeah. So if you're looking for like a good sip and tequila, that's not yeah. like break the bank. Yeah. There's a couple of really good ones in the 40 to $60 range. Okay. Um, you know, uh, Patron. Oh yeah. On Patron. Yeho is actually very good. I'm, I'm not a big fan of Patron's, uh, silver, just like yeah. you can make margaritas with that. Sure. Uh, but, um, Patrons on Yeho is, is very decent. I think that's about 55, 60 bucks. Um, I just found a new one. Um, Tierra Noble. Hmm. I'm really liking this. Uh, it's actually 45 and, yep. um, it's, I'm always looking for that value bottle because, um, my wife, you know, gets mad at me when I bring home $150 bottles of tequila <laughs> and they last, they last a month, you right. know, um, and uh, Tierra Noble, very good bottle, kind of nerdy in the tequila space. But um, so you've got your Blancos, your oh, okay. Reposados, and your Añejos. Okay, so your Blancos are like what are called young; they're 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 aged less than sixty days. That's why they're clear. Um, you've got your Reposados that are sixty days to two years is your Reposado, so they're a little darker, like they actually have a little color to them. And then you have your Añejos, which are two years and older um, in cask. And, um, so your Añejos drink more like a bourbon, Oh um, wow! but, but, but they're not, it's not bourbon. Yeah. Um, it just ha- has more of that kind of, it's darker. a little rich, a little, a little darker, a little more caramel in it and stuff yeah. like that. Um, so what a, this, this new tequila that I'm into, it's kind of a new category that people are, are, are getting into. It's called the Cristalino category and a Cristalino is a Reposado or an Añejo. So slightly aged, you know, got a little color to it that has been filtered back to clear. Oh, wow. So it's actually a slightly aged tequila, but it's clear. Like if you didn't know what it was, you would just think it's a, it's a silver. It's a, a, you know, a Blanco. But it tastes dark. But it it tastes so smooth. And so this Tierra Noble Cristalino I just bought last weekend, 
Um, it's like 45 bucks, man. And it drinks really, really nice. Just sipping. Um, you could sip on it. Yeah. Just sip on it. Pour it on an ice ball. Like I, I'm, I'm big on the, mm-hmm. the big, you know, I got the big yeah, round balls. The round balls yeah. Um, uh, you know, pour it over that and it's, it is very nice. Um, so that's, that's one of my other good values. Patron on Yeho is pretty good value in this tier. Noble I'm, I'm kind of working on right now. It's uh, I like that. So. Cool. Cool. Man, well, Jonathan, I, uh, you know, I feel like we could sit here and just chat for hours. It's been, I mean, I'm going to have to cut it just to respect your time and everything, but, uh, yeah, man, yeah, man before we get out of here, I guess we'll be keeping in touch obviously, uh, as we keep moving forward here, but did you want to give a shout out to anything else you got coming new in the next six to 12 months or so with you or the company? Man, uh, I guess, you know, in your space, uh, we got a really cool trip coming up. So your, your listeners need to stay tuned or go follow us yeah. on Instagram. Uh, because we've got a really cool trip coming up, uh, on the devil's river. Um, and, uh, y'all might not know about that, but the devil's river is a classified pristine river in Texas and, um, really, really beautiful river, amazing Mm -hmm. fishery. Um, it's one of those rivers that, you know, a lot of people, if you go look at a picture, you're like, dang dude, that's like that. I didn't think they had that in Texas. Um, and so we're doing a, a, a pretty, sweet turtle box sponsored trip down the devil's river oh, bringing wow. in some filmog- a couple of really badass videographers are coming with us um uh we've got the whole turtle box team and then a couple of non-turtle box buddies that are just tagging along the trip and so we'll be fishing and camping out along the devil's river uh it's a four or five day trip so we're doing that at the end of april huh. i'm gonna put out a little film uh on that and so it'll be really cool content around fishing the devil's river there you go um and, uh, so your, your it's followers exciting. should, should one, one, go look at the devil's river. Really cool, really cool part of Texas. And then, uh, you know, go follow us on Instagram so that you can kind of, uh, catch on to some of that content. It's going to be, going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, that's great. I was going to ask you too. I had a question here just on, on a location because we have a, a little, uh, like a members group, you know, it's people that listen to the show that are, you know, taking it deeper, connecting with people. And part of that is, is like, where can we go? Where's, where can we travel together? You know, are there some places, can we mm-hmm. learn from each other? And I think that's cool right there. We got some people in Texas, maybe they aren't aware of that. Maybe they can learn about it. So mm-hmm. I'll definitely uh, connect that. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, man, we'll, we'll keep in touch with you and uh, we'll send everybody over to, uh, we'll keep sending to wetflyswing.com slash turtle box. If they want to support uh, this podcast, support you guys and, and keep, yep. the, keep the good stuff going, man. I appreciate all your time today. No, Dave, it's been so fun, man. Thank you. So there you go. If you want to find all the show notes and all the links we covered, just go to wetflyswing.com slash 215. That's 215. Uh, if you get a chance, please head over to wetflyswing.com slash fly shop to support our local fly shop and this podcast in one super easy shot. Anything you purchase at that link uh, gives us a commission at no additional charge to you. So pretty cool deal we got going there. I want to thank you in advance if you had a chance to do that. I want to give a quick heads up uh, this Tuesday uh, morning. We got Bob Clay who is on to talk about creating an amazing bamboo spay rod. Uh, Bob, we had a great chat there. So looking forward to sharing that one with you. That's all I have for you today. I uh, hope you enjoyed this one and hope uh, you have a chance to maybe connect with us online or on the river. Thanks for listening to the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show. For notes and links from this episode, visit wetflyswing.com. 